You yeah. Know? I don't know if this is the kind of thing they would have even tried to clear. They would have just been like, oh, it's a business investment, you know? It, like, this might not have really been a clear mafia-sanctioned project. It might have yeah. just been Frank and a couple of people going off and trying yeah. to do something. And it, and was, it was clearly, it was, it was mob-connected because it was Frank, his father, who was a mob guy, Frank Ranny, who was a mob guy, and Gus Chiaverati, who was a mob guy. Everybody involved, except Albert Reinhardt, was a mob guy. And the original, the original guy who got the patent to the the bubble gun with Gus, Bob Schaefer, who I have no idea who Bob Schaefer was, probably not a mob guy. Because mm. it's really clear that even if this wasn't mob sanctioned, like from the top down, these were definitely guys who were totally okay with scamming people, <laughs> right? And. In- on a large, large scale, like they're not thinking about small, simple things anymore, man. This is big, right? You know, right. And up to this point, the biggest thing I think you've probably talked about. Well, I guess probably some of the gambling could have been big, but the only other thing that really like reaches this is when when they were when they were stealing from the distributors and shipping it all up to Detroit. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's kind of in this wheelhouse, but this is could have been so much bigger than even that could have yeah. ever been. Yeah, so, and there's a lot of this that I, I it needs to be developed more. the The problem for me is that when it started, the FBI was not heavily involved, and by the time it ended, the FBI was more involved with actively looking into these guys. A lot of what. I'm seeing is kind of after things have kind of collapsed. And I'd love to see more of when things were active, which would be like in the court documents. When the lawsuits happened, I'm sure there would have been a lot of background information in that. I don't, I don't have that. I would be curious too, if you could somehow get these companies that they were creating to do these. I mean, their tax documents must be. Mm-hmm. Well, are tax documents publicly available? The tax documents wouldn't be publicly available. I mean, they their annual filings would be their incorporation records and things like that. I don't know what that so would you, show. But. Well, it would show how long the companies were around for before they yeah. were dissolved. Yeah. But it's not really going to show you like... Because what would be interesting to see is how much money was flowing through these companies to see yeah. how big this thing could have been. I've looked into business records before because the when a company no longer exists, the old business records, I'm saying that so vaguely, business records, I don't know what they're called, you know, the incorporation documents. And stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. Like they go to, they go to the state historical society and what's, Interesting to me about those, there's not a lot of information. They're so extremely basic. You you know this as a mm. business owner. But what's interesting is when people sign the documents. Because when you have to start a company, there's who's the president, who's the vice president, who are your officers or whatever. And in your case, it's like, it's just you. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, 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 sometimes, but sometimes got like four or five, five people, people on like- these documents. And that's kind of fun to see. Like when you know that they started up a business – you know who's probably going to be the president. That's like the guy who runs the company. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you might see another name on there as an officer, and you're like, oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. That That's fun to see. I don't know that anything surprising would show up here because we kind of know who was involved. Yeah, but. yeah. If there was a way to just see just what they were doing, that would be really interesting to know because cause this is kind of an eye-opener to me how – how elaborate this scheme was. Yeah. And I mean, it sounds like it just basically fizzled out and died. Yeah. Never really even went anywhere. But God, what if they had been doing this for years and years, and this is just finally when they got caught for it? Yeah, I don't think... They maybe made a profit off of this because they were selling for a while before they got in trouble. I don't know. I mean, after the lawsuits and stuff, I don't know how much they really came out ahead on this one. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they won. Also, you only know so much. You only, I only know, know so much. Right? You only know when they got arrested. Right. Whereas, I mean, this this thing could have been going on for for years. Right. Yeah. And yeah. And I. You're absolutely right, and and I would love to know more. And like I said, like this is this one's kind of this one's kind of. I think I said that right off the bat. This one, like, there's pieces missing because it just didn't make it into the public until you know the lawsuits. 
And the lawsuit's like, I only have basic pieces of that because it's not easy to get the documents from a lawsuit. These are, they exist, but Mm -hmm. they're so buried, the old courthouses and stuff now. Like, I can get them. But it would take a little work. Yeah. And it's it is like, do I want to spend my day <laughs> trying to find this? Is it worthwhile? Maybe. Maybe it is. You never know until you do it, really. Right. So, I don't know. I think that was a pretty cool story. So, I don't yeah, I, even, I don't. It, it, but it's, but it's, it's right a, in it's my a, wheelhouse. So <laughs> I, I, I love this story. But it's like I said, it's, it's complex. It's, because it's, anytime they do one of these things... Where they set up these fake businesses, it gets really confusing. And, and the unfortunate thing is, is that when you set up a business, there isn't a lot to like, unless that business ends up in the news or something like that. There's just not a whole lot to see about a business that you can publicly access, right? Other than the fact that you know there was a business, and they operated probably from this year to this year, right? That's about all you can see with a business. You can't really see too much of what they were doing, how long they were doing it for, yeah. unless, and at what scale they were doing it for, unless you get a hold of documentation that you just can't access right. publicly. Right, yeah. That, I'll, I'll throw that for people for people who don't know, like, at least I don't know how other states operate, but in Wisconsin, you file your articles of incorporation, um, which is, like, super basic. It's, like, the most basic form imaginable, and it's, like, 15 bucks. Mm-hmm. And so that goes on file, and then each year you file your annual thing, which is another fifteen bucks. But I that's, actually think it's ten bucks. Is it ten? Well, whatever. It's, yeah, it's cheap. <laughs> it's cheap. It's cheap. And and like that's really all there is. And so if you like look up a company, all you know is when they were incorporated, and then eventually, Wisconsin marks them as in bad standing. And in bad standing doesn't even mean the business ceased to exist. It just means they got really lazy about filing their <laughs> <They're> paperwork. Kind of... <laughs> because sometimes if you look them up, they'll say in bad standing, and then five years later, they'll say return to good standing or something <laughs> restored to good standing, something like that. Which just means that like they're like, oh yeah, we didn't file our paperwork, so then you can file it, and the state's like super laid back about it. I'm like, oh yeah, you're good again. So that's but, funny. <laughs> so there's a, there, you know this. <laughs> I I've never not filed it, so you've never I been in bad that. standing. I, I've never, as far as I know, maybe we should go look at. Maybe I am in bad standing. So, but they don't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, it's just a way to get fifteen dollars. Yeah, it, I mean, <laughs> it's yeah. like so many things in the government. It's just it's just a way to collect a little bit of money. From yeah, it, and then so. and then eventually the company, if it's been in bad standing for too many years, it becomes involuntarily dissolved. Oh. Or if the company actually says that they're going to break up, it's administratively dissolved. dissolved. Yeah. Although, so I, obviously you've looked at a lot of these then to know all this difference. I spend an unusually yeah. large amount of time on the WDFI website. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Wisconsin <laughs> Department of Financial Institutions. Yes. I, which is why the corporations are on financial institutions. <laughs> I don't know, but that's what they're filed under. You don't you don't hang out at the WDFI? No, no, I go there once a year to <laughs> file the report you're talking about. <laughs> I the only reason I do it is sometimes I think it's fun to like see who owns a business. I just like to see who's like the owner of record for something. I don't know. Maybe so, so you just start randomly looking up businesses and say, "Oh, that's who owns that or <laughs> whatever." Well, sometimes well, it's not as weird as it sounds because <laughs> part of Part of my day job is doing the history of different businesses and stuff in town in where I work. It's not like it's me being like weird, being like, I wonder who owns this business. That's part of putting together business history is seeing who the registered agent is. Mm-hmm. And and it would be kind of fun to go look at Kakana for anybody who doesn't know. That's where Gavin works. Yeah. It's a very small town and there's tons of little bars in here that never change names. But I bet you if you go look at WDFI, yeah. you'll see... That bar's probably changed owners like 12 times over the last 15 oh, years or easily. something like yeah. that. So you always think it's the same bar, but it's really not never the same bar because it's constantly switching to owners. Yeah, that's true. But all right, I think we went off on another slight rabbit hole there. So We sure I, did. Did we finish the story? Or yeah, that's, that's it. A, I was going to say, like, it's supposed to be a super short, super basic story. It's just complicated it because, because these, these fake businesses make everything weird. harder than it should be. All right, well, I think that that means we can wrap this episode up as usual. <laughs>